What's up on today's brand new I Am Rapport Stereo podcast? I had to go back to the Apple Store and deal with problems with my $1,600 iPhone. We have some crazy, very upsetting, very disturbing sick fucks of the week. Warren Sapp is with me. One of the greatest football players is back once again. It's the Sappaport. We're talking all NFL, talking a whole bunch of shit. All that and more on a brand new Smash Mouth I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Plus, this is the first ever solo I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast that will be coming to life on YouTube at youtube.com slash Michael Rappaport. My YouTube page, we're filming it. This entire podcast is taken on a whole level. A whole new level. You can see the sick fucks come to life and so much more. Miles, Jordan, let's start this puppy off right. Let's start this puppy off nice. Let me get something funky. Let me get something nice. Let me get something real proper. It's the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Let's go. All right, it is the most wonderful time of the year, people. NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL are all in full swing. Guys, you've heard me talking about this for weeks, and some of you are still on the bench, whether you're an expert or a rookie. You should be betting at my bookie if you're the kind of guy or girl that likes to bet a little bit and win a lot, like playing the numbers on roulette. You can create a big parlay, pick three teams to win. If you hit all three, you could turn 100 bucks into 600 bucks. You know with me and our expert guest and the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Think Tank, you're going to have the edge. My bookie is the one bet I know you'll be happy with all year and even more so because we're winning over here. Okay, I recommend these guys because I really trust them. I use them. My bookie has been in business for years. They've got great online reviews and their mobile site is easy to use. Sign up now and my bookie will still match your first deposit dollar for dollar. Use the promo code Rappaport, R A P. A-P-O-R-T, and you'll get your first deposit matched 100%. Do you understand? 100%. The promo code is Rappaport. You play, you win, you get paid at mybookie.ag. All right, this is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. the White Chocolate Tito, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. And this is a monumentous occasion. We are doing the first ever solo recording of an I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast episode. Why the fuck we waited this long? I have no idea. I have no clue why we waited this long. Look at this fucking face. Huh? But we're doing it. You can now see the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. This full episode at youtube.com forward slash Michael Rappaport or the Michael Rappaport page at YouTube. Uh, if you've never watched or listened to the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, this is a non-fact-checking entity. So when I say YouTube slash Michael Rapport or Michael Rapport slash YouTube, uh, that's how we get down here. Uh, there's no fact-checking. We are rocking uh, without a net. Um, and you are now rocking with the best. This is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. What can I say? NBA is underway. LeBron James made his motherfucking Laker debut last night. Granted, it was in Portland, but it started. The NBA is underway. Uh, the New York Knicks are undefeated. They scored the most points in a quarter or a half they've ever scored, which means absolutely nothing, but it's a great way to start. They played at Madison Square Garden uh, with a, hell, a whole bunch of players that uh, most of the fans probably had no idea who the fuck they were, but we won. We won the game, the David Fisdale 
era is underway. We have young players, players that are playing hard. I don't know what the average age is, but there's like they're children. I think Ennis Cantor is the oldest guy, and he's 27, maybe 26. Um, there's 19-year-old dudes. There's 20-year-old dudes. There's dudes that literally can't get into clubs legally in New York City playing for the New York Knicks. But the NBA's underway, man. It's underway. I, I, uh, I'm i pacing myself with it. You know, it's not even Halloween. Normally, you're in total football, total fantasy uh, football mode now. And and this is really the start of, of when preseason games air, uh, but not anymore. The NBA is a 365-day-a-year entity. Uh, Jimmy Butler... Kawhi Leonard, all the people, they started playing. Everybody has played. Uh, There's new people on new teams. Andre Drummond um, and Blake Griffin are on the Detroit Pistons. Blake Griffin, the guy who used to jump over cars, used to be the darling of the NBA. He's in Detroit. No disrespect to Detroit, but he's in Detroit. He's getting paid a lot of money, but he's in Detroit. I love Detroit. Detroit is on the way back. But you never would have thought the darling, L.A.'s darling, Blake Griffin, who I told, I told Blake Griffin, I was with my wife, and we said to him, you could be our son. And he looked at us like we were fucking crazy, but he could. If you saw my wife and you saw me, Blake Griffin could be my son. Um, I don't think he would have the athletic ability that he has, but the looks, I don't think he'd be 6'9", 250 of steel, muscle, but he would look like that. He just wouldn't be able to jump, run, or do any of the... Th- he'd be, he'd be like, a, like a, a fucking 6'9", slow guy if he had my genes. Anyway, um, Andre Drummond is a fucking bully. He's out in Detroit. I think he scored 24 points and 20 rebounds like it was nothing. Like I, I love the way Andre Drummond played. He's pushing motherfuckers around, gets rebounds. He's physical. He's always near the basket. He, he, I mean, you know, you saw him in the in the off season because you see all these guys all fucking off season. You saw him shooting threes, and he was like, "Wait till you, this comes and all that shit." Then the game starts in the regular season. He's just fucking gooding. Friend of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, um, but he's just a throwback Bob Lanier, Artis Gilmore, Marcus, Maurice Lucas, Lonnie Shelton, just bully ball motherfucker, and it's perfect for Detroit. Paul George. I don't know why he said this, but Paul George said that if things had went his way and he had got his wish, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't fact check, um, and the trade worked out the way he had wanted to, he would have wound up a Los Angeles Laker. He's saying this uh, one game into the Oklahoma City Thunders season, and I don't don't understand why he would say this. you're not a, a Laker. You're in Oklahoma City. You're playing with Russell Westbrook. Why bring this up? I, I don't get I love Paul George. I love his hairline. He's got the best hairline in sports. That fucking thing. I mean, his, his forehead's about this big. His hairline, some might say it's grown too long, but I'd rather have it deep down here, a deep dish hairline, than, you know, what I got going here. You know what I mean? So I fuck with Paul George. I told him when I met him, I said, Paul George, I fuck with you, and I fuck with your hairline. Said that to him. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever said that to him. You know, but I feel like I made an impression because I said, I fuck with you. I fuck with your game. I'm glad you're back because we forget he had that crazy injury. Um, He's back to being Paul George and he wouldn't be Paul George without that fucking deep dish apple pie hair on that fucking thing is mean. Guy's got a forehead like this. Um, But I don't know why he would say that. I don't know why he would bring up uh, if things had sort of went the way he wanted and his dreams would come true, he'd be a Laker. You're not a Laker. Uh, you spend your weekends in Oklahoma City. And I've spoken to people who have worked with the Thunder. And uh, rest assured, Oklahoma City is exactly what you think would be. No disrespect to Oklahoma City, but it's not like it's on and popping. But the NBA season is here. And like I said, the Knicks are now 1-0. We have 81 more games to go. I am Rappaport Podcast. I played a guy named J.D. Harmeyer, who to most of the world is a is a loogie on the side of the street. If you don't listen to the Stern Show, if you listen to the Stern Show, you're like, yeah, everybody sort of loves to break J.D. Harmeyer's balls. But if you don't know who he is, he's 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 that. 
He's out on the side of the street. I played him in fantasy football last week and beat his fucking... I beat his ass. And, and that's what I live for in fantasy football. A guy whose team, on paper, technically may be better than mine. I don't care that your two best players, who shall remain nameless, were on a bye week. Tell it to the fucking judge. Okay, but in the Stern Show right now, I'm a cunt hair away at a first place. I'm, I'm kicking ass. I'm talking shit. Um, I play Ben Bardo, whose team's name is Who is Ben Bardo? And, and that's exactly the question. Nobody gives a fuck about Ben Bardo in the Stern Show League. Nobody gives a fuck about him in real life. And then next week, we have Gorilla Face Gary Delabonte with the bulletproof monkey teeth. We play him, and, and he is, he is the, the, the fantasy football crest. He's every single thing that I love about fantasy football. Win, lose, or draw. I am going to be in that gorilla tooth animal's ass all week. All fucking week. I'm going to give it to him real nice. And I'm going to give it to him real proper. Um, but that's coming up. Um, you know what the incident was this week? And I got to be totally honest. I've talked about uh, my iPhone uh, on the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast for the last couple of weeks. I said, uh, please shame me if I get the new iPhone X. I don't even know what it is. X10, XS, SX. I don't know what the fuck it is. But but I was like, please shame me. Please shame me if I if I spend $1,500. 50, $1,500 was the price of a laptop not that long ago. I actually think you can get a laptop today for $1,500. I said, please, I need help. Help me help myself not waste my fucking money on that iPhone. And, and, and a lot of you did. A lot of people reached out. A lot of people in the DM said, don't do it. You fuck you. Um, you fucking loser. All these things. What I asked for. And I didn't listen. Even though I, I asked to be uh, helped. I didn't listen. The day the phone came out, the day, no, the week after the phone came out, I did it. I was in New York City. I went to the Soho Apple store. And uh, uh, my guy there, I think his name is Chris or Mike. Um, he helped me out. And I got in and out of there like that. They, when you're in there to buy the $1,600 thing, they fucking whisk you in there. They fucking, I mean, they did everything besides bring me a, a, a cappuccino. You need a seat. We'll set this up real quick. We'll get you out of here. All that. It was a, it was a pleasant experience. And, and I even filled out the online rating. How is Chris or Mike to work with? Great, great, great. I even left a message. No bullshit. He knew all the information, whisked me in, whisked me out. Couldn't be more helpful. I filled out the little online brochure. It took 10 minutes. I was happy to do it because uh, I was happy with the service. Did I spend $1,600, $1,659 or something like that? It might have even been $1,709. Yes, but they made me feel like I was important um, and I was meaningful to the Apple uh, community. Okay, that was uh, about three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, get the phone set up. It's nice. Uh, everything's good. And I, I noticed a few days into it that, that it's, uh, again, uh, you know, like the pictures, I'm not Annie Leibovitz. I, you see, I, I collect photography. I have fantastic artwork. I'm, I'm a, a photography fan. What the fuck am I going to do with this phone? The last one, I, but I knew. I said, listen, we're not going to complain. Your pictures aren't going to get better because the, because the camera's better. As a photographer, I know that. Doesn't, the camera doesn't make the picture. The photographer, he makes the picture. But I knew that going into it. But that's not my point. I, I, the, the problem that I'm having with the, with the phone is that it's slow. And, and everybody said, oh, it's faster. My guy in the Soho said, it's faster. It's way faster. It's faster. And you can, you can literally have 500 gigabytes, which means you can, it's like online luggage. Like you can put your fucking pictures, your photos, your graphics, all these things that I don't use. But I was like, fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to massage myself and get myself that $1,700 phone. Despite the fact that you, the fan, said, don't do it. You fuck you. 
I had to come to terms a week after getting the phone that it's not working correctly. It's not faster. It's actually slower than the old piece of shit I have, which uh, a year and a half ago came out, and, and I walked you through all, all my comings and goings. So I said, fuck it. Uh, I was with the young shooter, Dean Collins, and uh, we went to the uh, Apple store at the Grove, and uh, they, they could give a fuck about you when you come in there and needing help. I go up to this guy and I go, hey, you know, in my way, this is how I am. I said to the guy, I said, uh, yo, this fucking thing ain't working, man. He's like, well, well what's the problem? He give me that look, that um, millennial, I could give a fuck look like that. That look like that. I'm the customer. The customer's always right. If I say this fucking thing is a piece of shit and it doesn't work, it's a piece of shit and it doesn't work. They don't teach these little pricks that. He's got his fucking blue shirt on. I say, uh, are you a genius? Yes, I am. I said, well, I, I, I need, to, this thing's fucked up, man. He said, well, do you have an appointment? I knew where this was going. We've been down this road. Uh, this prick was probably in high school, junior high school, when I first wasted my money on this fucking piece of shit. The iPhone 4, the iPhone 5, all that. Asking me, do I have an appointment? I go, I go, no, I, I don't have an appointment. I say, uh, but I didn't have an appointment when I, I came in here and spent the $1,700 on this fucking thing. And you guys whisked me out. You didn't ask me if I had an appointment the day I was there to buy it, did you? You didn't, you didn't need an appointment. He goes, well, well, well you're going to need an appointment to get that looked at. I go, no, I don't. I need the fucking manager. He goes, okay. I said, he's like, okay, like he's threatening me. I go, Please, go get the manager. I said, because this fucking thing don't work. $1,700 fucking dollars, and it don't work. Well, what's the problem? I go, it don't work. If I knew that, I'd be a genius like you. This whole thing was caught on, on tape by the young shooter. That's a fact. Whole thing was caught on tape. I'll, I'll show it to you. Manager comes out, and he's oh, asking me all these questions. Do you have an appointment? I go, I don't have a fucking appointment, man. He said, well, you know, appointment. I go, wait, wait, when can I get an appointment? Well, it'd be about three hours. No, I'm a busy man. I'm really not. I, I got nothing going on. I got fucking, I'm not a busy man. I got nothing going on. But I said, I, I can't do it. I, I got to do something. Okay, well, let's, what seems to be the problem? I go, the fucking thing don't work. It's slow. It's, I said, well, why don't you whip out your phone? Whip out your phone. He whips out his phone. I said, well, what kind of phone is it? Oh, well, this is an eight. It's not as good as yours. I go, no, it's not, huh? Let's see who's faster. So he, he does that. He does that. He takes me up on it, and he's, you know, turns mine on the Google search and his on the Google search. And lo and behold, Mr. Fucking Genius, I was the genius in that moment. His phone which probably cost $600, was slower than this $1,700 piece of shit. So oh, we're going to have to do a total reset. How long is that going to take, Duke? I want to get the fuck out of here, man. None of the massaging, none of the chairs, none of the, like, the feeling of like love, happy to see you. Do, do you want your credit card? You, we could email it to you. You know, when, they, when, they, when you're spending that $1,700, they're like, you know, would, do you want the receipt online or would you like a paper receipt? Oh, well, leave me. Oh, thank you. None of that. None of that. I'm, I'm a pain in the ass. And God is my fucking witness. The Apple store is also a dog park. While I was in there, look, you can see. While I was in the fucking Apple store, three people, I was there for about a half an hour. Three motherfuckers showed up with dogs. Some girl had a fucking horse. A German shepherd in the Apple store. Some other guy had tattoo face, gold teeth, and, and a little fucking like little Paris Hilton dog. Three dogs in a half an hour. I think, what if there's a dog fight? This is the Apple store. Fuck Starbucks bathrooms being open or not open. This is the fucking Apple store. I came here to fix this fucking phone. What if one dog got into a fight with another dog and this is happening in the Apple store? Steve Jobs is somewhere going, no, no, no. This is not the fucking dream I dreamed of. This girl's walking around with short shorts and a fucking German shepherd that, like, a kid, you could get your whole fucking face bit off by one of these bastards. Anyway, I'm going to be I'm gonna be totally honest. The fucker reset my phone. He said, I, and I, and I was thank you. Shook his hand. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
you know, oh, you, you're, oh, you're good, thank you. Uh, I go home, I, I, I reboot my phone, and it's still, it's still not working right. It's still, it's still a fucking piece of shit. It's still, he said, well, it might be one of the apps. I go, I don't got no porn. Ain't no you porn on this. When I do you porn, I go, I go on the big, the big screen here. I'm not that much of a fucking, you know, I don't, I don't want to be porning on the little phone and you're like this. And, nah, if I'm going to really, if I'm going to really, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it on the big puppy. So I don't know how this thing is going to play itself out, but I'm going to tell you right now that this Apple phone, this $1,700 iPhone X or whatever the fuck it is, it is not all that it is cracked up to be. They got great fucking commercials, great marketing. I am Rappaport Podcast. So this is really exciting, uh, to be honest with you, um, uh, taking this to a three-dimensional thing. Um, I would like to start shooting these on film. Why not? This is, this is art. We're making art. This is my art. Um, what else is going on? I, I, I saw, because people keep track of everything on social media, um, 24 years ago, one of the dopest, most slept-on hip-hop records I think uh, ever, uh, Word Life, OC, DITC, Digging in the Crates crew, uh, came out 24 years ago. I don't know who keeps track of this shit, or they have like little like a calendar of all this shit. Uh, but it came out 24 years ago, and what a dope ass record! The kind of hip hop that doesn't get made anymore. I, I re-listened to the entire album on my hike this morning. I know I look good. I feel good. Uh, Word Life by OC. Um, it's, it's literally like it aged so well like doo-wop music. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's it just they don't make that much more of that kind of music now. Not to say that it's, it's not relevant. It's just like that sound isn't made. The production was so dope. Lord Finesse did some joints on there. Buck Wild, who is a sort of slept on producer who's probably his most famous song is Biggie Smalls. I got a story to tell. Doom, doom, doom. Um, and uh, that record's dope. Um, all the joints on it are dope. Uh, I, I realized on that song, Point of Views, there's a, an intro in the beginning uh, with a dope-ass beat that I'm sure Jay-Z heard because he's a scholar of all this. He's like a fucking human Google machine of all this. I'm sure he referenced, because when he did the Black Album, he took the whole sample and used it for that for that banger public service announcement. Um, so if you haven't listened to that record uh, by OC, Word Life, um, in a long time where you never listened to it, check it out. It, it, it's the kind of hip-hop that they just do not make that much of anymore so i just wanted to give a shout out to that record shout out to the producer buck wild lord finesse i want those guys on the iron rap poor stereo podcast long time fan um and it's a, just a, a dope record that came out 24 fucking years ago uh, my favorite joint on there is the song time's up it's just just dope it's just a dope record I am podcast. so yeah this is the gloom tomb here Gloom Tomb Studios. One of the great things about this uh, studio is it's, um, what is this, aerodynamic? You, you, ergonomic? Ergonomic. Ergonomic. ergonomic? I think that's it. Or it's not aerodynamic? It can't. I, because I the, desk, the desk goes like that. Hey. Um, and you see, for the first time, live, Wheezy. My dog, Wheezy, who thinks I'm his father... Um, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast News Dog, he's wiped out because we did go on a hike today. Um, and listen, Wheezy's not great at anything but giving love. And, and some of us can't even do that. So no, he doesn't fetch anything. No, he doesn't do any tricks. He doesn't roll over. Sometimes he won't even eat the snacks I give him. He give me like an attitude if I give him a hard snack as opposed to like a soft. He likes a beef jerky snack, but he doesn't like the harder snack. Or he'll he'll put it in his mouth and drop it. And I'm like, I could either take it or you could eat it. Because I'll take the fucking thing and I'll throw it in the fucking garbage and then he'll eat it. Um, but he's sweet. But my whole thing with the cats, which has been a long standing war in my life. I put up another one of these cat videos where the cats were in my in my in my backyard. 
my my house, my backyard, feral homeless uh, cats in my neighborhood this week drinking out of my pool that I pay a, a pool guy to clean. So like, oh, you're complaining. I'm not complaining about, about paying the pool guy. I'm, not, I'm complaining about the cats. I'm complaining about the cats because uh, uh, the way I see it, and I, I ain't no scientist, I ain't no uh, animal expert, um, but if I get in the pool after a feral cat is drinking out of my pool, I might catch fucking rabies. I don't want to share uh, my pool water with a cat for the cat's drinking water. That's my prerogative. That's my fucking prerogative. I don't know what the fucking cats have. They're homeless. They're feral. See? So, oh, you're mean to the cats. No. The, the cat is trespassing. If it was a person who showed up in my backyard and was drinking the fucking chlorine pool, the salt water pool, actually, I'd have a problem with it. I have a problem with the cats doing it. I would have a problem with raccoons, uh, uh, pigs. As much as I love monkeys, it would be cute for a second. Then I'd be like, I'm never going back in the pool. I love those fucking monkeys, but I'm not sharing my pool with the monkeys. And the cats are not just driving me crazy. They're driving this fucking dog crazy. Wheezy is under siege. That's right, Wheezy. Wheezy doesn't know when they're coming, why they're coming, or where they're coming from. So every time I open my door, Wheezy freaks the fuck out. Because Wheezy thinks he's protecting the house. He, it's, it's dog and cats. Adam and Eve. It's mother nature. When he sees those feral stray cats, Wheezy does one of the few things that he does really good, he chases those fuckers. And you know what I say? Good boy, Wheezy. Good boy, yeah. That's right. Get those motherfuckers, Wheezy. Good job. I don't know how this is going to end. Some people are like, catch them in a cage. I, my man, yo, this is like the Apple Store, dude. I, I ain't got time for all that. Catch them in a cage and then bring them to a shelter. I'm not, I'm not trying to get in a relationship with these motherfuckers. I want them off my property. Don't scream at them. They're, they're trespassing. What about me? What about fucking Wheezy's mental well-being? I post these videos and people are so critical, like, you're this, you're that, and da-da-da-da-da. I want to be able to open my door and not have my dog have a fucking conniption. So, so don't, don't get upset at me. Think about Wheezy. Fuck the feral cats. F fuck the homeless cats. What about me? What about the trespassing? I am Rappaport Podcast. All right. It's time. This is the first ever audiovisual episode of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast with the award-winning I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast segment called The Sick Fuck of the Week. That's right. That's right. What you're hearing in the background is the... Uh, sick fuck of the week theme song and the sick fuck of the week is given to uh, not just anybody oh no uh, the sick fuck of the week is given to a certain person with a certain je ne sais quoi as they say a certain charisma a certain something that separates them from the pack and this first sick fuck of the week almost didn't make the cut of the sick fuck of the week because as sick as the sick fucks of the week are a lot of times, I'll be honest, they make me laugh, but there was nothing about this piece of shit that made me laugh. An Idaho wildlife official, an official in Idaho who works in the wildlife department, high-ranking piece of shit, went to Africa. This is a game hunter, a big game hunter, went to Africa, and he said... And his wife said that he wanted to impress her. He wanted to impress his wife. And this sick fucking piece of shit, hillbilly fucking punk pussy, this is disgusting. He killed a family of baboons to impress his wife. And his wife was impressed by it. You're a sick fuck? Look at him. 
and your wife is a sick fuck. Okay? You should not be allowed back in this country. I think this cocksucker resigned. I hope you never get hired again. You can live with your dead baboons that you killed. You sick fuck you. Your wife is a sick fuck. I'm going to have to run it up the flagpole if they should even be involved with the sick fuck of the week segment. It was so upsetting. A, a family of baboons. What, what would make, like, baboons uh, in some, like, African safari place? You're not really about that life, Duke. This is how you impress your wife? Why don't you get your fuck game up? Your fuck game is what should impress your wife. You're killing baboons to impress your wife and she was impressed by it? What is your sex life like? You dog, you animal, you sick fuck you. All right, next sick fuck of the week. We're going to have a more a uh, uh, lighthearted sick fuck. Florida man. If going to have sick fuck of the week, rest assured there's going to be at least one sick fuck of the week from Florida. Florida man um, is offended his entire neighborhood. He uh, is drawing uh, uh, letters, criticism, complaints from his entire neighborhood um, because he's doing his yard work butt-ass naked. My man, p- put some clothes on, Duke. The fuck are you doing? Uh, uh, there's, right as of now, there's no pictures of this sick fuck who was doing his yard work uh, butt ass naked, as I don't want to see them. Um, but put, why are you out there butt ass? Put a jock strap on at least, an old school jock strap. You know the kind that holds the jock with the little straps? You don't need to wear compression shorts. But there's fleas, there's mosquitoes out there. You're out there butt ass for what? For what? Go to Vegas. Go to Chippendales. You want to work? Do be, be, be the naked gardener guy at Chippendales. They're always looking for new uh, gimmicks. They got the firemen. They got the astronaut. Now they got the gardener guy. You come out with your fucking lawnmower and you work at Chippendales. You're offending the neighbors. You're scaring the kids. You're scaring the people in your neighborhood. This is a slow pitch sick fuck of the week. Um, Orange County. Slow pitch sick fuck of the week. And if you look up the gentlemen that make it to the sick fuck of the week, the men and women who make it to the sick fuck of the week segment, nine out of ten times they actually do Look like a sick fuck. Um, as you could tell here, uh, Michael Johnson and uh, Jesse Martin. Uh, Michael Johnson has uh, gotten rid of all the hair on his body, on his face, and he's tattooed his it, it, a whole collection up here. Looks like a sick fuck. Um, I don't know if you lost your hair, you shaved your hair. Um, why'd you get rid of the eyebrows? Dead giveaway as a sick fuck there. This cocksucker, these sick fucks, um, went after a guy who left uh, uh, their, their father's restaurant a bad review um, and participated in a drive-by shooting. Uh, the, the guy, uh, was uh, he left a bad post saying that the food wasn't good and the, the, the service wasn't good, so they shot him. Uh, and as you could tell, uh, this guy, particularly Michael Johnson, uh, tattoo face, he didn't look like a friendly guy. He didn't look like he has much going on with his life. Um, and, and he's definitely sick fuck of the week. All right, next up, a guy named Frederick Blue Manzarazis. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, he's got a deceptive sick fuck look. Because uh, if you look once, you might not catch the fact that he's a sick fuck. But as you look closer into his eyes, you can tell, yes, in fact, this guy is a sick fuck, a Colorado man was arrested um, and put in jail, got six months in the can for having sex with a dog who unfortunately needs to be euthanized because it became uh, progressively aggressive. See, the guy fucked the dog, and and then the dog naturally became unfriendly to people. That's what happens. Um, The dog can't be adopted. This guy's doing six months in jail. Hopefully, someone will fuck him. Eh? And we'll see if he becomes aggressive or he folds under pressure. See, this guy right here, check him out. He gets that good Wonder Bread bag and olive oil treatment. Six months is not that long of a period of time. But even in prison, there's guys that love animals. And hopefully, Frederick Blue will get treated real nice, real proper. And finally, I, I, I listen, I don't, I don't. Look for the sick fucks. The sick fucks, they come to me. 
Uh, uh, there's, there's two more. Uh, th- th- this is, again, I don't know why this is something that people do. I don't, I don't know why this is really like a theme, like why this happens so often, but it does. In Virginia, a woman and her husband who ran a kennel company were uh, accused of abusing animals and recording the acts. They were on that menage a trois. The man and the woman. Imagine if you're married. You're a married couple. And 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 you like together. You're not into like bringing in a, a guy or a girl or two guys or two girls. or You're not into cucking. You know, where you, you watch your, your wife or your husband. You're not into that. No. No, no, no. That's, that's not enough. You want to watch your wife. You want to watch your husband fuck around with it with animals and these people ran a kennel so they unfortunately had the pick of the litter um if you look at them they are sick fucks uh uh the investigation into 47 year old richard allen peterson and his wife uh was closed they're under arrest charges haven't been brought down on them but but god willing hopefully again uh this gentleman and his wife will get it in some form will get that good good wonder bread bag treatment oh finally this is a great sick fuck of the week i have to give this to my guy uh paul wall sent me this og paul wall from houston uh this guy gets a sick fuck slash dumb fuck he's what we he's what we call a double winner this dumb fuck tried to burn down his ex-wife's boyfriend's house and in the process gave himself look at this dumb fuck He gave himself third-degree burns and almost killed himself. Ernest Johnson, you dumb, sick fuck you. He threw a Molotov cocktail in there. He could have killed people. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, He lived, uh, but he'll never be the same. He got his shit all clayed up. Uh, He went to the hospital, suffered serious burns. And you know what? Good, fucko. Good for you. And that's why you made it to this week's Sick Fuck of the Week segment. Congratulations, Ernest Johnson. And now that wraps the first ever audiovisual Sick Fuck of the Week segment. All right, listen. Coming up next on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, Sappaport, Warren Sapp, all everything. Dick Buckus Award winner, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, one of the greatest football players ever, returns on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We're talking shit. And of course talking all sort of NFL heading into week seven we're almost at the midway point coming up next my main man Warren Sapp on the I Am Rap Poor Stereo podcast for another segment of Sapp Report with Warren Sapp and Michael Rappaport oh I love winning I love being right because for a shit talker like myself being right Sets the table. Did you check out my pick last night, Thursday night football on sportsbetcollective.com? You fuck you. If you didn't, then you missed out. I had the Broncos minus two at Arizona, and they won going away. The worst part for you, that that pick of mine that I bled for, that was free. Okay? I gave that to you guys for free. And I'm not alone here. The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Think Tank. We just win. Use my knowledge to help you win money. I am picking every single game this week at sportsbetcollective.com with commentary you will not find anywhere else. You missed out on my Thursday pick. Fear not Sunday. Sunday is almost here. Your first pick and analysis is free, and any additional picks cost a buck or less if you buy a pack of five. But you don't have to listen to me. They've also got expert writers picking NBA and college football games every day. Bookmark this page, sportsbetcollective.com. That's sportsbetcollective.com. Catch all my picks at sportsbetcollective.com. Let my knowledge, let the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Think Tank knowledge win you money. All right. Warren Sapp. Oh. 
Hello. Zappaport. Ah! I, <laughs> you know what? You get out, get you out of the lab. Dude, get out of the lab. That's it right there. Get out of the lab. Zappaport. I like the Zappaport. I like that one. There. But you know what? I got to tell you two things I love when I come out here to see you in L.A. The sky without a cloud in it. But I hate the goddamn traffic. God, Tomati knows. It's 35. But aren't you used to it, though? You mean you've been... You've been- we no, dealing. no, no, yeah, no. You, I'm a Florida boy. Right. We got I-95. And you never I played fold. here, so you never like no. really like dug in when with the traffic. When I got in the National Football League, the Rams left LA. Right. They left LA. So you were just dipping in and out. Oh, uh, it was here just exquisite. Great place to visit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I never yeah, had yeah. an appointment. I had now to the make. traffic is. Oh. You got to plan. You got to give yourself. 15, 20, depending on where you are. Uh, extra 20. Like, if, if you don't know how to move around and navigate through it and, like, the, the escape route oh, you're one dead. You're and then dead. escape route two. You're dead. Um, <laughs> Warren Sapp, I Am Rappaport, Route 99, I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, Killer Collab, Sappaport. First question. It's been, people have been talking about it all week. Uh, uh, we'll get into the game and the greatness of the game and the plays and the scoring and all that stuff. Um, Tyreek Hill into the end Flash. zone. I mean, yo. Well, first of all, Tyreek Hill just just as a as a as a speedster. Forget a skill and talent. Like, have you ever seen who was the fastest little saw, dude? No, no, no. I gotta help you out. I saw Deion Sanders and Sammy Smith race in a regional in high school when I was a little boy. I was about 11, 12 years old. My sister was old enough to, you know, be in high school with Sammy, so we went to the track meet. My God, Deion Sanders, that that was like speed beyond speed. When and you know, Florida's a fast place, but this, oof, that's what I saw. Was he time. the fastest of the yes, fast? Yes, yes, he he ran so fast at a combine he left, ran the forty and just went out the door, Bye got bye. on the plane and left. Like, there you go. I, I, I'm, that's I, it. That's all you need that's to it. see. That's it. When when you were on the field, as far as somebody, were you just or or if you were even on the sideline, like a, a punt returner or a kick returner? Couple guys. Who? Couple guys. Uh, Mike Vick was that. You know, watching his was he, highlights. Was he like that fast? Oh yeah, he'd be dead and then he gone. That's Not why just you had fast it. for no, a quarterback. No, 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 no. Fast period. <laughs> when you that fast, your hair blow in the wind. You know what I'm saying? Even this little short stuff that yeah. we have, it blows in the wind when you run that fast. Mike Vick's that fast. Randy Moss is that fast. Uh, Eric Metcalf is that quick. You know, quick like that there and then oh, and they're gone. I mean, shh. but boy, fast guys. You, you, Michael Bennett one time, he hit the B-gap on us. Me and Brooks still talk about it to this day. <laughs> he hit his head on the goalpost before we could turn around and look. He was gone. I mean, gone. Jesus. Fast. Fast. Who was the fastest, like, let's say, big motherfucker? Like, you were just, like, who, like, as far as, like, forget the little guys or the Dion's. Like, those are, <laughs> those are, those are guys that are, could play all sports. Who was, like, the fastest, like, freakishly big motherfucker? But, like, because you're big. big but you're, like Big Daddy Dan Wilkerson. Okay. When they were talking about that big fucker ran a four six five and he and how was like big was he three fifteen three thirty that's 3. like a like, monster like, that's like a bowling ball of butcher knives you know what I'm saying it just gets rolling that's a and scary it cuts movie. Anything. oh that's get the hell out of his There's way nothing you can do nothing get out of his way because it's coming through climb into a building run do whatever high. he wants to do jump like hell you know they say Eric Swan was that kind of freakish too you know it's been some freakish guys like that and I wish I could run like that. All right, so Tyreek does oh. runs into the runs into the past the end zone. He, he 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 like it literally looked like he was like you know when you see uh, like, like Randall here running up through the, the top yeah just he just and he's just I stopping himself. Stop he literally he needed to, he didn't go in there to turn he needed to stop turn around and then the like the blink it was literally happened so quick beer spit in his face thrown in his face fingers you know fuck you fuck you fuck you he turns around he doesn't acknowledge it the fans have been banned I think they're trying to arrest somebody I don't know. Well, what is your take on that? And what is your memory of like the worst game, worst stadium, most vehemently like fuck you, uh, oppositional, like where you were in enemy territory? First, like what happened with Tyreek? No, Are you surprised? All right. First of all, I love Rowdy fans. My first two games in the National Football League was in the Vet and in Cleveland Stadium. On the road in the National Football League, my first two games. So I understand the passion of fans. But when you get to where you can actually physically come in contact with someone, or exert your bodily fluids or your Budweiser or whatever, you know, frosty beverage it would have been, you got to restrain yourself. This is a game. Right. You're going home to your children, your wives, and, 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 and go on tomorrow. Tomorrow's a work day if the Patriots lose or not. It's still not going to take away the five championships that you have. 
I mean, it, it's like people lose themselves in that moment. Like, here's my chance to do something that 15 seconds of fame. It ain't 15 minutes no more. And that ain't even fame. It, it's bullshit. Now the whole world sees oh, you. Oh, you, 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 you got to show but, up at work. But, but let's say this. It's Boston. Did right. you expect anything? You where the classiness of Boston come at? When you played New England, <laughs> what, what what city was like, or what game do you remember where you were like, no, yo, no, no, keep no, your no. helmet the on? The second one, I went to the dog pound, <laughs> and you know I had the little draft thing, so you know I got to get to hear all the weed comments and everything. So you know, I, I'm listening for something new. You know, what I'm saying let me hear a right. new one because I've heard it all. You know, what I'm saying I got five on it. We got a dime bag. We got. I, I've heard all this shit. I mean, give me something good. God damn it, I've heard all this. God damn it, it's been six months. So I go to the dog pound, and I'm, I always turn my back to the fans. I turn my back to them, and I'm in the end zone. I got my helmet on. I hear, dick. I said, what the fuck? I look down, there's a dog biscuit. I got hit in the head with a dog biscuit. I picked that bitch up and bit it. <laughs> they went fucking berserk. But they love that, oh, though, no, right? went fucking berserk. Like, ah, oh, we love you. Why did they take you? I mean, it. it that's why I say I love a fan that has passion about his team, but you got to be able to contain yourself when you get close enough. Because I was standing with Dr. J, Michael Jordan, uh, Bill Russell, and a couple of other greats at Michael Jordan's last game in Philadelphia. <laughs> and we had just beat Philly in the championship game to go uh, to the Super Bowl and won uh, the Super Bowl. We got wet with Bill that night, too. Because of you. Oh, just because of me. Michael Jordan said, see, this type of shit happened when you round sap. And they, they just spread it away. I mean, just got away from me. I'm like, well, let me go back over here on the other side where I don't get wet all the way up right now because I got the great ones away from me. Philly fans are no joke, right? Oh, no. Philly fans, you know, peppered uh, Santa Claus with snowballs. So That's like, when I, I had to respect that shit. Oh, like no, I, I was respect like, that, too, because that's not a real person. You throwing I, I, snowballs listen, at Santa, I love, Santa Claus. Santa Claus ain't real. They no jolly white guy spreading no joy at no. my house after all his hard ass work I'm putting in. The jolly black guy is spreading the joy around my house. Right. So that's what I say. And Philly cheered when Michael Irvin. That's when I lost respect for him. 1999, Michael Irvin went down, hit his head on the vet turf. And they, you know, when they take your face mask off and they strap you in and all that foolishness. Oh, my goodness. They cheered. I, that that's when I lost it for Philly right there. So would you say you in all the that. places, because could Philadelphia be like the no, like? No, I played in the black hole, buddy. What were they my like? My first game in Oakland. When you were in stabbed. Tampa? No, 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 no. I went to Oakland for four years, buddy. No, I'm saying. I am a Raider. No, no, no. no. Okay. I went to Oakland in 2004. My first game against the San Diego Chargers, someone got stabbed. My last game in Oakland versus the San Diego Chargers, someone got shot. In the fucking arena. In the stadium? There you go. All right. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> and you can look this up. That's a that's a day. Someone yeah. got stabbed? Yeah, I'm not with Someone any of that shot. shit. Someone got shot. I'm not with I any of that shit. I went into Oakland, they were stabbing, and when I left, they were shooting. Daddy, I'm not with any of that shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Take your ass whooping like a man. Yeah, yeah. Take your ass whooping like a man. If you want to fight, it's a, it's a football up. game. Come on. And if you want to fight, lock up, knuckle to knuckle, take your ass whooping, and then go home, put a little alcohol, put some dirt on it, yeah. come back tomorrow. We take this shit too far. Mm. Um, all right, the where are we at with the NFL? What what is exciting? What is not exciting? Where what have you what have you learned? Like now we're starting to get into who's real, who's not real. No, we find out the, who the imposters are and who the hell don't know what they're doing. Like the Giants, like your damn Giants. Sap, you're a defensive player. You're with the Giants. Like I mean, we talked about this the last time, and I, and and I really, I really thought, and now I'm done. I, I gotta be honest. That nerve. I'm, I'm fucking that no, nerve. I'm fucking I, done. That's what I wanted to hear. I'm fucking done there with the is. Odell shit. There it is. I'm fucking done. What is that? Because up? I don't understand this. Like sometimes I feel like the Odell antics. Like he's trying to show the world how much he cares, and I'm like, we we obviously you care. We we all care. <laughs> the trainers care. Your your conditioning coach care. The fucking the groundskeeper care. Everybody and of course you care. You're 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 the number one player. Hello. But at what point is it like? Well, what I mean, what do you make of this? And and if you're on the defense, like how much sort of like communication? If you're on that team in your prime and you have this kid who's who's fucking great, what do you do? You're on defense. Like listen, honestly, I, listen. I had Keyshawn Johnson. Buddy. Okay. So don't give me that shit. Okay. I, so I, I'll take Odell Beckham and his, and his speed and his spectacular catches to 106 touch, to 106 catches and one fucking touchdown. Trust me, I, I had a nightmare situation, brother. Come on. Look. Well, 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 okay. So first, Odell, and then like remind us about Keyshawn because some some people, you yeah, know, like, yeah, but Odell is doing some way outlandish stuff. Because I mean, of what? I don't know. 
Maybe it's just New York. I mean, you get guys in New York who were just but we, nice see, I meet was going guys. With that though, but no one. I was thinking nice of like meet guys out of all the and y'all players. turn them into monsters. Like like Victor Cruz, all of a sudden hit the scene, and now you had to do the salsa off the wrong foot, off the wrong combination, and everything. And now where's he? But he got injured. They don't come back from injuries no more. I didn't know this was the '80s when you blow an ACL and but, you gone forever. But Victor was a lovable thing. Victor was a lovable thing. Like the, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because he didn't make much money. And it he just he sort of came okay, out of nowhere. But, he, but then y'all created this monster that didn't want to play no more. So now what do you think Odell Beckham going to do with that check? Check don't change. Running back in the backfield got to prove he's worthy of being on this level now. Right. It's on him. So, but, <laughs> and my quarterback, I don't like him. Y'all should have drafted me a quarterback, too. Yo, if we didn't draft you, okay, so like you either have Sam Darnold or one of these guys. Oh, I like fun. Sam Darnold. Okay, you, I like yeah, Sam Darnold. But, but, I mean. They're st- looking for the next 20 years, we'd not the still, last But 20. we'd still be fucked with Sam, Sam Darnold. <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like this year Odell Beckham would. <laughs> All of a sudden be the greatest receiver ever. I got and, you. And I got Sam you. Darnold would be like you. hopefully I, yeah, the way he is in his you. fourth I year. I got you. I got you. Like the problem. Take like what you, you have and play good ball. Whether we pick Sam Darnold or Saquon, and, I, and Saquon's doing great. Oh, my God. He's killing it. But we'd still be. I didn't see that. And I'm still jury's out. It's, it's early. Yeah, it's real early. The jury's but, but out the kid, on everybody. But, but that kid, boy, he gets out of some holes. Woo, woo. But if you're, on the, if you're on the team, like, let me, okay, so let's go to your specific thing. Your headache was, was Keyshawn. Oh. Throw me the damn ball. No, that was in New York. If you just said that shit in Tampa, it would have been over. But, but how does it work in terms of, oh, like, you you're the captain of what? the defense? Like, do you, do you say to the wide receiver? Eight yards in a cloud receiver? of dust. Is, is, it, is it church and state with, with the, like, the defense and offense? Or would you say, yo, what the fuck? Or if you have no, a No, it's like three branches of government. But explain it. Offense, defense, special team. And then there's an overlord, which being the head coach. But those three phases have to be in sync. And the Giants are all over the damn place. If they don't botch, if, he, if Odell don't botch the kick down there in Carolina, that's not a 63-yard game winner. You got to put the game in a totality situation. And that, you know the first person who said specifically that about Odell? Because it's like, you make mistakes too, motherfucker. And you're, I don't get what? it. You going to get knocked down in a football game. That's the whole purpose of a football game is to knock you down, get you off your game. Now what do you do? Right. You do what? Go to your weakness and then beat him. You want to beat a man, you, you, go, you attack his weaknesses. You want to break a man, you attack his strengths. Right. See, that's the type of football I like. See, I'm going to break you. You know exactly what I'm lining up in, and you can't do a damn thing about it except take this ass whooping. And the Giants are all over the place. I mean, all over the place. But the O-line, when your O-line is not And what the you, defense, though. Like, the defense is like <laughs> Ain't doing points. nothing. I mean, I, I can't believe – I'm watching Cam Newton go down the field on this drive, and I'm like, son, you're going to need another six, seven yards. You know? <laughs> I mean, to, to respectively line your kick up and say we got a shot to win this game. You, you gonna, he didn't get it. He didn't even get those extra yards. I'm like, how is – and then the kicker came through. So, hey, man, the Giants just snake bitten right now. <laughs> but, but, but does all the, all the antics and all the fighting the fan, like the fan, not the fans, like he, he banged his head against it, and now Sterling Shepard is like, well, you could throw a shit fit, I could throw a shit fit. I mean, I just don't understand, like, you know, what's the end game with it? Like, we got our best player who's out of control. Like, is it reasonable to be like, you know what? Sit your fucking ass down. We're not playing you the second. Like, well, how does this end? Oh, we sent ours home. We sent ours to Fox TV. You go do games or whatever you want to do out in California. Got to get out from around us. We was out to defend the championship, and he didn't want to conform with anything we had going. That's, that's conduct detrimental to the team. I know it's written in your contract. Al right. Davis had an insubordination one in there, so if he told you something and you didn't do it, that was a reason for you to not get paid this week. Insubordination. Hey, but we know... Through life, there's been two things that will show the true character of a man. Power and money. I just don't understand. Power and money will, will, will make you come out your shell and show exactly what and who you are. So do, do you no think this is going to get any better? Form. This is not going to get better with him. Oh, no, it gets worse. And, and you know, the thing for me is, like, if, you know, historically, whether it's Dez, who's out of the league right now, Chad, who was... How good was Chad? Oh, my goodness. And then... It just disappeared. Because the NFL said, enough. Enough. When the bullshit and your talent meet, you're gone. Ask Terrell Owens. Ask Randy Moss. That's what I'm saying. It, it, that's, and that's the receivers the, are the ones hey, that... Hey, hello. There's a laundry list of them if you ain't watching. <laughs> and there's probably second tier ones that, that are... That are ready to jump up in the top tier and do the same dumb shit. 
Instead of being like Julio, hey, man, I don't get the ball in the red zone, I go out and run the routes and play the game. And that's Julio Jones. Hello. Every year, like Hello. clockwork, the motherfuckers. Yeah, but that might be that Nick Saban breaking you, too, because I've seen him. <laughs> Amari Cooper might be the quietest Miami Northwest bull I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I just, I can't believe he went to Northwest in the middle of Miami off 95. I, I just can't. I just can't. I mean, I, I see the kid, I watched him walk around training camp for two, three days, didn't say a word. Not a word. If a Miami Dade County player ain't bumping his gums, especially ain't a play. receiver, right? Oh my God! But any good one, a good one? Oh, they ain't doing nothing but bumping their gums. It's like a Florida thing. Gum bumping comes with playing well. That's what we do. I said the Giants. You say what? What? What's on your head? What's on your mind in terms of the league? Like who's draft good? position? Which one? <laughs> when you say Giants, I say draft position. Uh, okay. When I say and when you when I say Raiders. Oh, even better draft position. <laughs> is, is, is this is this Khalil thing? Was no, this, the the no, this is John Gruden not wanting to coach young kids who don't believe in anything but likes, views, and followers, getting a 28.1-year-old team that's nice and old. I watch – Is that you? That's, 29, their, that's no, their age? 28.5 is the average. 28.1. Collectively. Average. Don't Penn's way over 28. <laughs> right. You know, I can't <laughs> right like Derek Johnson's way over 28. You see what I'm saying? They dragging some of them 22, like the Amari Cooper and the Derek Carr. When you think about their They're weapons, you think, the of the fucking... yeah, they're trying to bring it under 30. It's Without them kids, it, it'll go over 31 in a heartbeat. It, like, like that. Shit, Jordy Nelson ain't no damn swing chicken either. So think about what we're talking about here. You know, he's building a team with a bunch of young, you know, Whoopersnappers with a bunch of old guys that he's trying to incorporate because you want to do a certain, you want to run your system a certain way. And young kids just don't believe in your system to where now offensive coordinators like Andy Reid and great offensive mind Jeremy Bates and these guys have turned themselves over and said, okay, this kid comes into college with this spread stuff. Let's do it. We call it RPO now. Right. <laughs> hey, every damn player in the National Football League is RPO. Damn it, run pass option. You got both options. Right. RPO and a F. Run pass or fuck it up. That's what you have in the NFL. That, that's it a three option you have. Run pass. Hey, run pass, fuck it up. That's what you have in the National Football League. Every player is like that. <laughs> right. Jim McMahon, I was watching the 85 team. Jim McMahon used to get plays coming in and be like, nah, we ain't running that. We finna call this. Run pass option. Right. This is in 85. Right. Me and you were babies. Don't even know nothing about this. It's change. They have to change because the NFL used to be a cookie cutter. Six foot four, 250 pound quarterback with a rifle arm. Hands had to be this big to hold a big NFL football. All these things. That's what it was. Russell Wilson broke that mold. A lot of guys have broken that mold. Mike Vick broke that mold. Drew Brees breaks that mold. You know, all the, the, the quarterbacks we watch today break that mold. Right. Except the... Peyton Manning's and you know, the Tom Brady, you know. But Brady wasn't looking like no no monster greatest quarterback when he came out of Michigan. Hell no. Oh God, Jesus. He looked crazy. What was that? Uh what's that what's that red stuff at the uh movies that you buy that 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 flings around that you eat? Licorice? Yeah, that's what he looked like. <laughs> he was soft. Soft. Oh. It's tissue paper. It looks crazy but now he's a when beast you look now, at- boy. Beast. Ooh, the whoa. motherfuckers out there like, yo, whoa. three minutes, you knew it was over. Oh, it's it's over. over. When he scored and they spit, I'm like, damn, they get to spit on him and win. They did some shit in Boston. Oh, yeah, I, I said it to myself. I said, that's some shit right there. You spit on the man and win. That's some bullshit. Yeah, he he got that shit. Like, it's it, talk about a monster movie. It's like, our three minutes that's left. That's a field goal. Shh, bye-bye. Field goal. field goal. That's how he wins the Super Bowls. He's never won totally one where he had relaxed. to drive. He never had won one where he had to drive and score a winning touchdown. But he ran the motherfucker in last time. I'm like, this is the slowest. Like, you, he could do his little quarterback sneaks from one yard. He ran oh, yeah, like yeah. a four or five yard. I'm like. All right. Now, I got a question for you. And he's 41. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> hey, listen. When you know the game and you have certain situations, I mean, you got to go. He's, That's what Matt Ryan take fucking notes. Sometimes you got to run it in, son. Sometimes right. you got to put your light, like John Elway do the helicopter right. in the air. You right. got to go for right. your football team. And, and sometimes. That's when they'll kill for you. Right. That's when you've crossed the line. Oh, yeah, he one of us. Cause he fucking did that shit, Tom you Brady. Have to. You that have motherfucker's to. 41. Yeah, you got to. And he took a hit. Oh, yeah, you got to. That's the whole point. You got to get on the track sometime. Take the hit, get off, and... Do you think with Matt... Because you wanted to ask me a question, but do you think with yeah. Matt Ryan, is he just like, that's not even a consideration? No. It's no, really not a, a consideration. Bit. You know how he got his name, Matty Ice? He used to <laughs> carry an ice mug around so he can drink out of the kegs at the parties in college. He had an ice mug. That's how he got the name, Matty Ice. Not from being Matty Ice. 
I tell me the cool, calm, collective situation where he brought home the championship, and I'll name him something else. Like, right. That's that cold mug he used right. to drag around Boston College that's to it. drink. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to ask me? Uh, you were t- you brought up the sneak, <laughs> and I got I got tortured because you know I'm sitting there watching. I forget who. Oh, Deshaun Watson on the one yard line. Yes. What happened to the quarterback sneak? With him. Drew Brees does it, jumps up over the If Tom Brady could do ball. it, anyone oh, could do Tom it. Oh, Tom Brady's never been stopped on a fourth and one. This is one of the lures that the GOAT, 200 wins, never been stopped on fourth and one, f- winner of five Super Bowls, damn Joe Montana. Yeah, I got all that. But we get the one, some of the best athletes in America right. because it used to be one of my greatest stats I used to pull out. Cam Newton, since he got in the National Football League, his amount of rush touchdowns, I don't think there's a back in front of him. There's not a back in front of him. Right. When you allow... One of those horses down there on that inside that one two yard line to sniff that goal line because I have a golden rule: all quarterbacks get courage in the red zone, all except Matt Ryan. <laughs> it's just Matt Ryan would not do it. I but mean, what I, about Deshaun too? Who? When we were saying um, Watson, yeah, Th- they give him a shotgun full read of the field. I don't get it. I don't even. I don't know football, Sap. No, I'm like, but why is this shotgun? The closer shotgun? you get to the goal, stay that, hey, stay closer, hello. right? You get don't go sh- further. Shotgun. The ball's offset. three yards back now. Now nah, I want to throw a fade route. The first one was a fade. I'm like, okay, I understand the fade with Andre. The, okay, uh, now we right got now. two more chances. Let's get Can in we this. just fucking Earl Campbell it or Walter Payton? Walter Payton Can up and over the top. Somebody fucking jump this. Hello, the quarterback. We watched Drew Brees do it. Perriott. No, only thing you got to do is snap the ball and Go stick. Go like this. And why do they give him a foot? I don't know. Full? I'm asking you. You're hey, fucking I'm Hall of Fame. You're asking me. I don't hey, know I fucking play defense thing. around here. I'm trying to figure out what the, the hell are they doing. He's asking me. You're asking me. I don't know fucking anything. Brother, I'm trying to ask you because maybe you have some insight. <laughs> I got some fucking insight. I don't have fucking insight. I don't know fucking anything. <laughs> yeah, you, you do. You tell me you why. Like me. And I, he's my all right, fantasy okay, guy. All right. I got this for you. You're going to ask me another no, football no, 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 question. No, no, You're no, a fucking no, Hall of Fame. I'm not asking you for no more football questions. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you a couple things in the National Football League that used to be true that are no longer true. In the words of the great Al Davis, in the first five to ten plays of a football game, the opposing quarterback must go down, and he must go down hard. Great defenses travel in the National Football League. Jacksonville Jaguars show up in fucking Dallas and shit the bed. Jalen Ramsey, shut your damn mouth, boy, until you learn how to play defense, read coverages, and do your damn job. That's what, and when you talk that shit, that shit comes back if you ain't got nothing to it. Bowl is the best cornerback on that team. And if anybody's watching it and telling me you want Jalen Ramsey and you don't want Bowl, you don't know football. So Jalen Ramsey, shut the hell up, son. They made him look like a clown out there. What no, ain't no monster receivers in Dallas. Ain't no monster receivers in Dallas. This man out here, ooh, shit, Josh Gordon got his shit together after he wiped up last week. He got him a nice pick and then watch the Redskins win, play the game like he's supposed to. Shut your damn mouth. You ain't that great. What I miss? I, I, I hear you, man. The shutdown corner is gone. Why? They don't allow him to beat him up anymore. Only thing you got to do is go that's... watch Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice in the Georgia Dome back in the day where, where they got so heated they fighting each other. <laughs> That, that's when you know it's me and you all day long, big boy. Whatever gum you chewing, I'm getting a piece. You go in the bathroom, I'm wiping you. That's that's the football I grew up on right, right. there. This, oh, they foo-foo. don't let them hit them off the line. No, they're jamming the thing. But because if they did, they grab and pull and yank, and it'd be a, it'd it be a penalty into- all day long. Oh, it'd just be flags all day long. Because you see some of these penalties and the kids look on their face like, you call that? Like, what the hell? You almost raped him out there. What? Right. Why you have this innocent look on your face? Right. I, I don't get it. I right. Mean, I mean, blatant over-the-top penalties, and they looking like, what you, what you saw? Uh, you grabbing, holding, out of position, about to be burnt, trying to save a touchdown. As of right now, what defense is playoff ready? None. 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 Come on. Listen, the National Football League is now who can score 30 points. Look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneer game. Did you see that last one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. They almost had one. Yeah. (laughs) Where you come up with that at? You drawing up plays like that, you know you need some wild ass shit, right? Yeah. You drawing up some shit we've never seen at the end of the game that almost worked and win a game. That's your team? Yeah. What the fuck was that? (laughs) I got to find out. (laughs) I was like, holy shit. But it almost worked. 
It almost worked. Almost worked. But because so, it hadn't been practiced enough. That's all it is. Philly, Philly was some shit that wasn't good until they practiced the hell out of it. And it right, comes right. But a crazy play you got to practice this isn't two hand touch in the park. Like, this is the NFL. This hey, ain't man. even preseason. They don't have as much time as they used to have. Oh, come on. But then why are you trying some, some hey, way out it's there? It's the end of the game. We need this. What is your take? Like a lot of people were saying, I mean, Jameis played well this weekend. Listen, let, let my quarterback get the rust off him and he will be fine. Okay, that fit, that, you're that taking fits, that. That fits magic shit. You've seen that in New York. He's a backup Come quarterback. Come on, man. He's a, he's a journeyman. They're going to go through 50 teams. A, a lovely guy for you, for your morale. If something happened to your quarterback, he could fill four or five weeks and play well enough for you to hold it. Like, and, he and did exactly story. what he was supposed to do. But, Sap, when I say to you right now, like, mm-hmm. is, is it the rules? Or, or is it just like the rules are making it so defense is not in vogue? Defense is like no, their they, hands off. They put an Audubon in the middle of the field. Will that tighten up come late December, January? No. It gets wider. They want to see. It gets wider. They want. This gap between offense and defense gets wider because at the beginning of the year, defense is always ahead of offense because of timing. Right. So when it gets later in the year, you get tired, you get lazy. Shit, defensive coordinator can't come up with so many f- f- four strong four weeks. You don't come up with so much cloud coverage. That's why Tom Brady at the end of the fourth quarter, he got your ass. If you're in a position where I need three points, I got you. You can't show me nothing that you haven't showed me and in the last four quarters. That's because of what is it? You just can't. Four strong or four weak. All right. In the National Football League, I need to draw it for you. But look, center in the middle, guard, tackle. Guard, tackle. Back in the back. Five, six. Right. Three go that way, those guard tackle, then the back goes, 3-3. Three, three. Right. When you send four, that's one more than you got the block. Four strong, four weak. That's how we blitz in the National Football League. And then if it gets to a certain point where you on the goal line and you need the ball back, you send everything. Right. That's called Banzai. Banzai. <laughs> so later in the – but later in the game, later in the season. Oh, yeah, defense is vanilla. That's why – the great ones line up in cover two. The great ones line up in Dallas's fucking I formation, pro formation. We coming with Emmitt Smith. We coming with cover two. Tom Brady's coming with that, that damn ring dink whatever he does, and here it comes. We going to what we know. And you got to be damn enough to stop it. Right. Yeah. And a guy like that, it's oh, it's done. Especially when you got to manufacture he's, something. He's been doing he, – Brady's the done it so many Brady, times. The way you beat Brady is with a front four, the way the Giants did it. You got to rush him. Tuck in the middle, straight hand coming from the outside. Whoever the hell has the mother to their head rushing. Brandon Graham coming up the middle, getting that sack call from him at the end of the game. You got to take the game from him. You can't allow him to keep going because if no, you don't no, make the no. play, if you don't make the play, he will. He's a fucking sushi oh, chef he's back going there. To make, he... And they open the field. They don't allow you to hit nobody underneath the damn chin anymore. Damn Miami game targeting. Damn it. Best damn DB gone. Another one's already gone. Now, nah, see, now you're dragging me all the way back to Saturday. It's bad football, boy, all around this weekend. What about – how are you feeling about Dallas? Dak Prescott. Is, is this guy – is he a victim of his early success? Or is he just not that good? No, you're a victim of being a Dallas Cowboy quarterback, and you have to run, live down Roger the Dodger and Troy Aikman in championships. And That's it's all just, it is. It's, it's, and, a, it's sort and, of a no, lose-lose, no, no. lose, right? And the greatest backup in Cowboy history in Jason Garrett. Right. <laughs> You know he did show up and beat the, beat the Green Bay Packers on Thanksgiving at one time. Right, Cut. one the time. It's back up in cowboy history. Shit. It's a thankless job. No, you get way more credit than you deserve, and you get way more blame. That is the that is the golden rule. That's never going to change about the National Football League. So but that Dallas just, is like, oh, Dallas going to be that way, and then Texas is Texas, and that's a black quarterback. So <laughs> light skin. Black quarterback, <laughs> light bright, damn near white. Don't cut it, brother. So, so <laughs> what do you what do you make of him? Like, is he a good like? Because I, I no, feel no, like no, 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 no. He came out of no, nowhere. Stop, stop. What happened was the Dallas Cowboys. You know, uh, Brad Johnson has more touchdown passes than Troy Aikman, right? I didn't know that. Okay, Dallas Cowboys live off a formula of running the ball, then I'll throw it when I have to, or when I need to, or when I you don't expect me to. Up top to Hopper. Post to Michael, square to Michael, Nova check working it. But it's basically this O-line and, and Emmett. This O-line and Zeke. And then they had Dez out there where if you got into a one-on-one, Dez can handle that. Right. That's what Jacksonville thought. Jalen can handle that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> See? But when you can't handle that, that is a one-on-one with a paid receiver that can get, get down. And if you got a quarterback like that, that makes an easy read, cuz. When I got single high safety, that's mm. an easy read. 
That takes all this foolishness out of this thing. I can go back and go, okay, let's go to work. So their big win this weekend is, is no, it? No, 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 no. If you get put in that situation where now you got to go eight in the box and you need to stop Zeke and your cornerbacks ain't ready to play because they don't know the name of the receiver and they ain't really paid attention this week, yeah, you can get beat just like that. You get stung. Shit, we walked out to Oakland. We was on, what, six, seven-game winning streak? It was on my birthday in 99. 45 to nothing. They ran for 365 yards on my ass. Trust me, it'll happen. Right in the front of your face. And there's a damn thing you can do about it because you haven't prepared all week. It's too late now. Do you remember, like, when, when you say that game, like... Oh, it, like yesterday. Oh, majority of your games? Yeah, any one of them you got. You just tell me the score, what it is, or scenario. Like, yeah, do please, no problem. But no you're problem. one of those people. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that most football players? Cause every, I don't know. But the like, ones if that I give throw, a damn? Yeah. <laughs> if I threw, like, a game at you, oh, yeah. I, you're going to be in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Oh, no, we get it to it. Hell yeah. Shit, yeah. That's my life. I lived that shit. And, you, and, the and film, I was sober while I was doing it. That's what really <laughs> You know, and you we, watch we the film and the tape. You get your mind right and the tape, it kind of oozes in, it gets right. But boy, when you sober that thing, oh, oh God. The endorphins <laughs> and everything get in there. It's good memories. You mentioned hanging with Jordan. You you were a Nike, you were a Jordan, a, a, a Jordan brand guy. Yeah. What, what, like I've met, I've seen actors, <laughs> athletes. I've never met Michael Jordan. Never. No. I've never like even dapped him no. up. No. Never even like in passing. I've no. never made eye contact with him. What's Michael Jordan? Where the hell were you at when Jordan was playing all these basketball I just, games? I, I you was were Rennie from fucking higher learning. I never, I never yeah, fucked with him. Wouldn't give you tickets to I these ne- games. I seen him. I seen oh, him. Oh, you just never pro. Okay, never, okay, you know, okay. Like okay, okay. Been in the room. Like, been in the room. Like, okay. But Jordan, okay. All right. in his prime. In the next three Super Bowls in Atlanta, Tampa, Miami, I'm gonna make sure we go to the Jordan party. And That's you gotta thing. introduce. No, I'm gonna me. walk you up to him. What the hell are you talking about? Because I don't want a no, fucked up Jordan story. I'm gonna walk you up to him. Yeah, of course you. Because there's some fucked up Jordan stories. Fucked up Jordan stories. I've been there for a couple of them. Holy shit. Trust me. He don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> so, but, but, but Mike, like when, when you were chilling with him, like, first of all, like the star, his star, his celebrity, how big was it? And just what is Michael Jordan like? Is it's he more, just- it's more like a private environment where it's like car. The first time I met him, I went to his house in Chicago and him and his boys were down there in his trophy room playing cards. I don't play cards, but I do smoke nice cigars and he had a, Ooh, he had a cigar room and the trophies and the, I mean, it's just a down to earth guy if that's where you at. But if you on the other side, please let it be Mr. Jordan or whatever and please be real courteous and not at dinner when we sit there eating. So, you know what I'm saying? Certain, right. There's certain things that mama taught you that really apply to life like right, that. Right, right, right. You know, but other than that, he's, he, re- he really a fun guy. Is he a shit talker? Like oh car- my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He talks shit. Yeah. I watched him go at Dominique Wilkins for about 10 minutes. It was bad. About ball, about Oh, car. no, about just shit. Shit. With, with, like, you, obviously, you didn't play basketball with him. Did you get, like, he was a, like a pure bred killer. alpha dog, killer. right? Absolute killer. You could get that just from his disposition. Killer. He want to fight if we got to no, go no, to no, fight. I don't, I don't think it's about a fight, but he going he gonna to get right, right up to that line. Never seen him, you know, like that, but... I've seen him go at you because he's going to go at you at a card game. He's going to go at you at, at pool, whatever. Uh, don't sit on him at a poker table. I call it the death march. Oh, it's a death march. Oh. And this is younger Jordan. Yeah. He probably, because yeah. he ain't got basketball now, he's probably fucking well, worse. Well, got the that. twins and the mama now, too. Right. You know, you gotta, Slow you know, your ass you, down. Oh, you better believe even, it. Even MJ. Better, she going to stop that shit. <laughs> you know what right. Hey, la, 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 la. Motherfuckers got to sleep. <laughs> we got these kids sleeping. <laughs> All right, Sap. What else did the NFL like? Where are we at? What is what is the the, the landscape of the NFL? Like I asked you in the beginning of the season predictions. I know. I know. It's like you I told you. Wait the goddamn Thanksgiving. I've been telling you this since day one. We're at week seven. That's where we at. We we almost halfway. And right now, I'm looking at the damn thing, and I'm like, okay, the Chicago Bears. Are they good? Not not sure. Because the Miami Dolphins ain't really a test because that's Tanny Hill and company down there. You know what I'm saying? But they played a pretty good game. We know Oakland's dead. Cincinnati, I don't know, you, you can't hold your home field in your division. Now you got to you gotta go to Heinz Field and try to single it up. That's why I, uh, the first two months is the freshest, fastest football you want to play. So you want to get out. You want to get out because take it from someone that was on three teams that were three years in a row was three and four after week fucking seven. <laughs> right where we at right now. 
And all three of them made the playoffs. And one of them I went to the NFC Championship game and won six in a row and went out to Oakland and got beat 45 nothing. Yeah. Right. That's the type of shit I'm looking at. I mean, you look at you look at Minnesota and you go, God damn, is Kirk Cousins going to throw his arm off? <laughs> I mean, how many times are they going to throw this ball, right? Right. And then Andrew Luck, really? Ursay? After all those years of Peyton Manning and every offensive weapon you could possibly imagine trying to get to him, you leave Andrew Luck's cupboard bare. This man throwing the ball 521 times in the last five weeks. Are you kidding me? The amount, the repetition, the throws, and you know he's not healthy because he's coming back. And then he's still throwing the interception and running and making the tackle. Yeah, he's crazy. Oh, yeah, but he's the best. I love that damn guy. Be, because of that? I love it. And I, just no, like his competitiveness? But, yeah, because he can play the game on, at a very, very high level, but when he makes the mistake, he wants to correct that mistake. And there's nothing like a guy that'll tell you my bad and then go wipe the deck with him in the process of telling you my bad. The Rams are for real. They're for real, right? Yeah, they're for real. They got an offense that mm, I really look at that offense and that's better than the greatest show on turf. Because Gurley and, and Marshall's a watch, but I give Marshall the check because he's from New Orleans. And when, when you're from, you from New Orleans, it's just, you just got a little toughness, a little more toughness to you. I love Todd Gurley, and he flicked it with that left hand, so he's a little more artistry, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. A little bit more grimy. I'll take the grimier back than the artist, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love the Picasso, but I'll take that grimy with right. me. That's Marshall. But those receivers? They oh got all God. they got the whole they, the whole they, kit. they feed off each other. Right. You know, Tory and them was in competition. You right. Know, Tory and the in the in the Rev and Ike them, they was in competition. Right. And crazy Roland Williams in that tight end. You know, he wanted to be a star too. And he right. was just a tight end getting two catches a game. These boys here are flat foot feeding off yeah, each other. I agree. Whatever we need, coach, we gonna do. Whoever's high coach, let's feed him. And I'm def I'm a, and I'm definitely gonna run that clear out so he can come underneath me. Right. When you got a group like that, man, and I know it's from the head coach. When you have a savant that sits like that and he lives the game. He lives the game and he's going to turn over every rock for you. A man like that, you, you want to play for, you live to play for, you dream to play for. I swear, you dream to play for McVay. You dream to play for a guy that wakes up in the morning and nothing he wants to do except get you in a position to dominate him on a Sunday afternoon. My God, give him to me every day of the week and twice on Sunday. What is your take on this? I think it's stupid. I mean, you 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 look at it in a different way because you're Warren Sapp. <laughs> well, but what is your take on this? Jared Goff is just a system quarterback. I'm like, if the if the shoe fits, great. Okay, if okay, the system okay, fits. Okay, they said that Terrell Davis, Clinton Porters, and Mike Anderson, the other Anderson, the other fucking 22, whoever the hell was in Denver was system running back, but they were putting up 60 other fucking yards. So I'd be a system running back too. That's some nice system to run in because you still got to do it. Jared Goff is benefiting from matchups, a coaching staff, and a confidence in himself. That when, he had to earn. Oh, that you have to build. Because remember play the first couple in, of days when he came out. in, they were like, I he don't sucks. Give it the, hey, Play in and play out because in the National Football League, you are 60 minutes from the penthouse to the outhouse, and it goes that fast. Ask Jacksonville. It goes that fast, and for two weeks, now Jacksonville is the worst defense on earth, right? Right. It, it happens that fast to you, and it can go for four or five weeks. Just this, that fast. This because is just the last bullshit, time I checked, right? Blake Bortles can't get nobody out of shit. He, well, yeah, what's. Wet paper bag. He can't get himself out of a wet paper he bag. Stinks. I watched him. You want him, you want to know a system quarterback? That's him. Because I watched George O'Leary at UCF tell him, you throw the ball right there or I'm pulling your ass out of the game. You drop back and you throw it there. You throw it there. That's it. He was made to play. And when Blake got an easy read, he throws it like that. Right. But when somebody in his face, oh, duck one, duck two, right. duck three, duck four, oh, good God almighty, there's too many people in here, get me out of here. Is that a way of like – marginalizing Goff? Is it because he doesn't run? I mean, you know he ain't running, like, but I mean, he's... Hey. You it don't matter, got, right? You ain't got to run when you are yeah, where you the front lawn dropping dimes like that. That boy dropped dimes. I mean, them balls he's dropping on that dog. Them receivers ain't reaching for them balls. Right. They're hitting them right there. So he's a very good quarterback. Yeah, and that man is dropping that thing in the bucket, some kind of nasty Todd Gurley running it, and that defense will bite. Yes. Whew. And that defense will bite. And when they get them two corners back... Oh, my God, the front and the back end working together late in the year, and you ain't got nothing but your raggedy-ass offense that really don't go, and you got to come up with two or three trick plays for four quarters, it's going to be hard as hell to beat the Rams. It's going to be hard as hell to beat the Rams. And L.A. will wake up and fill that place up. 
oh my God, it's going to be a fucking party. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a good party. It's going to be showtime oh, with it's LeBron. Be a good party. It's going to be hey, showtime. Greatest show on grass, baby. Let's go. Greatest show on grass. You better bring your ass because yeah, they got a lot of weapons. I agree. I agree. <laughs> you better agree. bring your ass because they got a lot of weapons, bro. I agree. Them motherfuckers are good. <laughs> and, I, I, and it's so funny because I remember, like, I had no, no skin in it with Goff, but, like, when he came in, I can't remember who he came in for. This first season, he got fucking knocked around on Monday Night Football. Oh, got abused on he Monday sucks. Night Football. He sucks. He's this. Oh, this he's dead. this. I don't he's a know bum. Why drafted him. All this, yeah. And, and now he's a system. I'm like, yo, now he got a, a head coach and a play caller that knows exactly what he is and what's around him, and they are absolutely ding dong dong. And yeah, a quarterback, ringing the bell. <laughs> if you don't have to run, that's not Why your, would you want your quarterback Play running run? back. Listen, play Mike, receiver. Mike Vick is the greatest thing we ever seen in the National Football League, hands down. But that shit is a once in a lifetime. Right. That's a one. Marcus Vick couldn't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> that, shit, that shit's a once in a lifetime. And Jerry Goff ain't definitely Tim not Tito doing it. Tito couldn't do it. Right. He was 40 pounds bigger. Right. That shit don't play in the National Football right. League. Vic was the only one. Right. Somebody else, you better throw this ball. Right. And when you get running, you better slide your ass down. Right. <laughs> right. As RG3. Right. <laughs> right. Hello, Tinata. Right. <laughs> Leg went That's everywhere. it. Lord Jesus. I never felt nothing like this before. I know you hadn't, son. That's why they asked you to slide. All right. I don't get it. Sapaport, uh, Route 99, we're week, heading into week seven. Oh, we're yeah. going to be rocking all season. Hey, listen, we're going to rock all season because with the Patriots doing what they're doing, I like the Jets. You see, you always say you don't Who, like the Jets. I like, you like Sam the Donald. Jets for what? Like <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I like how, Sam, how much you like I like them? Sam Donald. They ran for 232 yards on Denver because Denver didn't realize that, you know, they are smallest defense. You believe this shit? I guess people are just not reading your own profile. I mean, just look at yourself and, and understand your weaknesses and your strengths as a defense because you're going to give up 350 yards. That's just what the National Football League does now. Right. You're going to give up 350 yards. You're going to give up around 25, 26 points. Whatever you learned in the past about the 350 oh, are changing. that shit is dead. The 400-yard game is on the verge of being a regular 5-6 time. Fitzpatrick has his jersey in Canton, Ohio right. for three straight weeks right. of 400-yard games. Right. Not Dan Marino, not Joe Montana, not not any of those great That's crazy. Great, the, the Amish rifle. He'll be in there for that. That jersey will not leave. It's there. It's only going to be displayed for this year, but it, it's up there. It won't, he won't get it. Now, they'll put it in one of them back rooms. That no, motherfucker no, ain't not, coming there's, out. There's not a lot of back rooms in there. <laughs> <laughs> they put you on display right in the front. Right. And then they should. put you in the back. After after that's it, that's but it'll it. it'll be commonplace though. That that that. Oh no no! Somebody else jersey might join him, but it won't be the Dan Marinos or the great quarterbacks, the gunslingers that we right. talked about, the right. Elways, right. the Phil Sims with a four hundred and forty five yard right. game and stuff like that. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Wow! What is the single game record for the most yards? Flynn. I'm thinking Matt F Flynn. Five hundred and five or some crazy shit. No, because Phil's got five forty five. We don't fact check. Phil, 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 Phil's got five forty five. He's got a five forty five. Or 454. No, it's a 500 yard game. It's a 500 yard game. I think it's like 530. We got three people around we're, us, we're, all with smartphones, and they now one of them looking this shit up. No, you, we're going to. You, you'll, you'll be amazed. We'll, we'll come back. Somebody on will get it. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, next yeah, time we'll we're going to play Warren Sapp we'll trivia. Oh, we're gonna play. oh, there it is. All right. We're going to see what the Hall of Famer knows. How about that? Zappaport, Rappaport, Route 99, Iron Rappaport Stereo Podcast, all NFL, everything. Yeah. Shit talking extravaganza. <laughs> I want to thank my guest, Warren Sapp, for rocking with me. Uh, Route 99, I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast collab. Um, what can I say? It's very exciting. Um, more to come, I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan, take us out of here with something real nice, something real proper, something real funky. And, and you can see this episode, the entire episode with the audio Visual, three-dimensional quality, put together by the young shooter. We got all kind of graphics. You can actually see the sick fucks we're talking about. You can see the short film of what actually occurred at the Apple Store at youtube.com slash Michael Rappaport. YouTube.com slash Michael Rappaport. I can't wait to see what you guys think of it. Uh, Sap, thanks for rocking with me. Miles, Jordan, take us out of here with something real nice, something real proper.